Hi, this is David Abanek Turtle with second in a series on operational risk. And here I thought I'd illustrate specifically the four moments that we use to describe a distribution. And to do that, I made up here a very simple discrete distribution. It doesn't have a continuous line, so it's a discrete. And that means technically it's a probability mass function. And I got here five values. Here, the probability that the random variable x equals 10 is 5%, so that's this row here. Then next, the probability that random variable x equals a 20 is 20%, so that's the height of this bar here at 20%. And here, the probability that random variable x equals a 30 as an outcome has fully a 50% probability. So I made these five number uh, probabilities up, and you can see instead of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, I fudged up the 40 and the 50 a little bit, and that's to give this a little bit of skew and a little bit of a heavy tail to show how that reflects in the numbers. But this does meet the criteria for the definition of a probability function, or in this case, a probability mass function, because the sum of these probabilities, each of these outcomes, which is mutually exclusive, is 1 or 100%. That's part of what we need as a requirement of the probability function. And so now we can talk about the four central moments that we use to describe the distribution. And what are these? These are really just shorthand metrics to tell us something about the personality of the distribution without us having to sift through all of the nuances. And so we're going to have four. And this is the generic form here of the kth central moment. So first, second, third, fourth, it's going to be denoted by mu sub k, and it's going to be the expected value of what's inside the square brackets here. The observation or value, the random out outcome x minus the mean, that quantity raised to the kth power. So it's the k that changes here. First, then second, then third is going to help us with skew, and then fourth is going to help us with kurtosis. So that's the general form. It's pretty abstract, but if we keep this in mind, it's the k that's going to change. And then, but before we go to this, though, first we'll use the mean, which is a simple case, but it's so simple we don't really need it. That mean, as you probably know, is just going to be the weighted average. So here we're going to take the outcome x multiplied by the probability that x happens. That's 0.5. And again here, outcome x times probability that x happens or occurs. And we take all five of those and sum those together. And what we've done is we've, we've calculated a weighted average, which in our fancy terminology is the first central moment. It's the mean. And notice 31.1 to sort of match our intuition. I had 30 here pretty much in the middle. And I fudge these up at the right, dragging that mean over to the right of the mode of 30 a little bit. Okay, now let's do the second moment, or really I should say the second central moment. Keep this one in mind. And we call that the variance. And now notice same general formula, the expectation here of what I'm going to call the difference squared. Squared because we're talking about the central, the second central moment. And this is going to be our classic measure of dispersion calculated here in this column. And notice here what we do is we implement this formula. We take the x of 10, subtract the mean that we already calculated, 31.1 is our mu. So we've got the difference between this x, this outcome, and the mean. That quantity is going to be raised to the second power. After all, we're doing a variance here. And so you can see this is the difference. This is squaring it. And finally, we multiply it by the probability that it occurs. That's going to help us here produce the expectations. We do that for each one, each of the five outcomes. Value of x, subtract the mean. So we've got the difference. We square it, multiply that by the probability. Take all five of those and you guessed it, we sum them. 
and we that by summing these probabilities that serve as weights we've computed the expected value of the difference between each of the x's and the mean and that gives us the variance and then right below the variance as you probably know i take the square root of it because the variance is in units squared and i get the standard deviation which we're denoting by sigma so that's very classic so that standard deviation is in the familiar units and it's the classic measure of dispersion so now we've got a sigma and we can move to the third moment so we we'll only have two more the skew which is almost the third moment but the skew is the third central moment divided by sigma cubed and so this is going to be measure of the symmetry of the distribution however except for that difference that it's the third central moment divided by sigma cubed the form is the same here and as illustrated in this spreadsheet and i'll put that link up under the video we've got the x minus mu the mean quantity here raised to the third power this time because we're doing a third moment finally multiplied by the probability of five percent so you can see this here the difference between x and the mean quantity cubed multiplied by the probability we do that for each of the outcomes we sum those and what this gives us here as labeled is the third central moment so it's just like the second central moment except we cubed this difference instead of squared it however the units are awkward to us and so we sort of standardize and, con and convert them into, into more usable units by dividing by sigma cubed so that's all I've done here taken the third central moment and divided by sigma which is the standard deviation cubed and notice I get a skew of 0 0.4 a little bit higher than 0 because 0 would imply symmetry like a normal distribution and lack of skew here I've got some positive skew I meant to do that you'll recall so I've got a tilt positive skew or positive in the right direction and then finally we take the kurtosis that's our classic measure of the fat or heavy tailness now it's not the only way to measure heavy tails there's at least three or four methods but it's probably the most one of the more common and it's just like skew really except now we're dealing with a four instead of a three and you'll see I'll go right here to this cell we're taking X minus the mean that's this difference here and we're raising it to the fourth power to reflect here we want a fourth central moment and we're multiplying that by the probability summing those gives us here the fourth central moment which is the numerator and then if we go down here to kurtosis we're going to take that fourth central moment and divide it by in this case sigma to the fourth power so that standard deviation to the fourth power and we find that the kurtosis here equals 3.02 and a kurtosis of three is what a normal distribution has so typically we say kurtosis greater than three indicates heavy tail so this is slightly heavy tailed also could say it has excess kurtosis of zero that's the amount of kurtosis above three so the excess kurtosis here is 0 0.02 barely has a heavy tail to reflect the uh, fudging I did here on these two outcomes but you can see now here sort of this is the idea of the four central moment I did a simple distribution the distribution can be a lot more complex but it gives us four metrics we can look at that kind of summarize the personality in basic terms of the distribution the personality of our distribution is it has a mean of 31.1 it has a variance or dispersion of 112 take the square root of that uh, this dispersion also is a standard deviation of 10.6 it has a skew of 0.4 meaning a little bit of a positive tilt to the right and that's slightly heavy tails with a kurtosis of 3.02 but pretty close tail wise 
to the normal distribution. This is David Harper. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.